the keeper of my life, my teacher comforter. You're the one who prompts and whispers to my wandering faith. If only I would listen. If you're new to our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunanyin, don't forget to validate your Touch and Go card. One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. Hi everyone! Here's a step-by-step -step guide on how you can book your e-ticket online. First, log on to sibkl.org.my Then click on Physical Services. Next, scroll down and click on whichever service you would like to attend. You'll be directed to a new page where you can book your ticket. Please read through the guidelines as we care for your safety. Click on Register. Select Buy on Map. Zoom in to select your seats. Click Checkout. Fill in your details and you'll find the ticket in your email inbox. It's that simple. Looking forward to seeing you at church. Yeah. 
always for us, Lord. Even we don't see or feel it, you are there with us, oh God. Amen. If you're new to our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunan Yin, don't forget to validate your Touch and Go card. One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. Hi everyone! Here's a step-by-step -step guide on how you can book your e-ticket online. First, log on to sibkl.org.my Then click on Physical Services. Next, scroll down and click on whichever service you would like to attend you'll be directed to a new page where you can book your ticket. Please read through the guidelines as we care for your safety. Click on Register. Select Buy on Map. Zoom in to select your seats. Click Checkout. Fill in your details and you'll find the ticket in your email inbox. It's that simple. Looking forward to seeing you at church. Yes, Lord. And no one can move like Jesus does. No one can love like Jesus love Oh, He can change The hardest heart Nothing else but Jesus love No one can say Like Jesus says He is raised
Cause there is no one else like you, Jesus None compares to you, Lord Oh, we declare your love Over our lives Over our families, Lord is physically back. To register, head on to our SIBKL website homepage and scroll down till you see Children Ministry Physical Service. Click here. You'll be directed to the registration page. Do register quickly as space is very limited.
I can't wait to see all our children back in church. See you soon. Brother Wilson Ng is a businessman, author, and an ordained minister of God. He was awarded the Distinguished Leadership Award by the Third World Leaders Association for his contribution to the work of the Kingdom and currently serves under multiple ministries. Come join us for our upcoming El Piso session where he will share on the Cascade of Healing. More details are on the screen, so hope to see you there. Tis the season for giving. The Golden Eagles invite you to join them for a classic Christmas session, starting off with the musical A True Christmas for Joe Jungkook, featuring hymns and songs and carols from the old, old days. There will be a fun little quiz with prizes too. After that, find out about the meaning of Christmas in Wuhan as we Zoom with friends from Wuhan live. It's going to be a fun session. So we hope to see you all there. This upcoming Healing and Miracle Night has invited Pastor Sam Surindran to share on the topic, God's Prison Break. Pastor Sam has been in full-time Christian ministry for 34 years and also pioneered the Excel Point Community Church. He has authored a book titled, Found in Christ, and has since written multiple devotional books and discipleship manuals. We invite everyone to join us and be blessed by his sharing. One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. If you're new to our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunan Yin, don't forget to validate your Touch and Go card. everyone and welcome back to SRBKL. For those of you who are here physically, it's so amazing, right? This is, okay, online people, I'm so sorry, but for the physical people who are here right now, you get to see the beautiful Christmas decoration that are up already. Yeah, so for those of you who are online, don't worry, you're not missing out yet. I want to encourage you. Maybe you say, eh, how come I didn't get the information about coming back to church physically? 
Don't worry, the registration will open every Wednesday. Okay, every Wednesday at 12 p.m. And we would love for all of you to be here in our physical building celebrating Jesus together. Amen. Is that is that, that right, guys? Is that right? Yeah, it's going to be an amazing time. And yeah, I'm Jeremy, by the way, in case you all cannot remember who I am. And I'm also one of the pastors in the children's ministry. So a little heads up, if you have children, children's ministry is opening physically tomorrow after so long. Yeah, so I really want to invite all of the children to come to our physical service tomorrow. So today, even in, in it's December already, can you guys believe it? It's December already. So I just want uh, uh, to ask you a few questions if you don't mind. How many of you right now at home or in your car, you're already playing Christmas music? Here again, raise up your hands. Michael Bublé, Mariah Carey, all these songs that come out. Okay, great, great, wonderful. Okay, second question. How many of you, you already have your Christmas trees up? Hands up. Yeah, come on, don't be shy, put it up. Yeah, yeah, okay, let me have a look. Okay, hands up. Continue leaving your hands up there. Okay, let's raise up your hands. I'm going to ask the second question. Continue to raise up your hands if your Christmas tree has been there since last year. You didn't take it out, leave it up. Yeah, because that's what my friend told me. Just leave your Christmas tree up there. You come, uh, Hari Raya, put the ketupat there. You know, after that, come Deepak Bali, put more lights on it. You know, that kind of thing. But anyway, I'm just so excited. It's already uh, December and all of us are in a time of visiting our friends and all that. So I just want to give a little reminder, even as we visit our friends, and, and, and you know, with all the social distancing, can I invite you to be just be a little bit more careful during this period as well. You know, if you are feeling a little bit unwell, do your self-home quarantine, do your RTK test during this period. We just want to be responsible citizens of Malaysia, right? Amen? Is that alright? Yeah, so this is the time that we want to be safe. And today, I would just like to ask any one of you, if this is your first time visiting SIBKL, either on online, if you are joining us first time to our SIBKL service, just say hello, hi guys. You know, it's on. Uh, it's my first day here joining you guys online. Or those of you who are right here physically, it's your first time joining us at our, our service physically. Can I just invite you to raise up your hands? I know there's one. Sim, I just met uh, uh, Mrs. Sim all there. Yeah, anyone else? Can you just raise your hands? We just want to, oh, another one there, hello. Come on the sixth floor. Yes, we just want to acknowledge you. Thank you so much. We would love to get to know you more better. If you could just kindly go to the connect counter outside after the service. So once again, everyone, let's just shout, say hello, uh, SIBKL. Let's just say he hello, SIBKL. We're in hello, SIBKL. Hello, That's SIBKL. right. And today, it's also communion weekend. Yes, there's a lot of things happening today. It's communion weekend. So for those of you at home, can I just invite you to just prepare a, a, a biscuit and a, and a juice as well as you prepare ourselves for communion later after service. And for those of you who are here with us, as you entered, I hope you actually received your emblems. If you have yet to receive them, can you just raise your hands and our very friendly friends will just pass to you an emblem if you have not had any. Can you just raise your hands? Wonderful. Looks like all of you have your emblems already. And today is also another special day. Wow, yes, there's a lot of things going on. For our sermon today, we are reaching the end of the Zechariah series. Wow, it's been, God has been so faithful this year with all the wonderful words of knowledge, words of wisdom, all the Rima word from God being spoke through the various pastors. And today, we have Pastor Chu that will be doing a, a big review of Zechariah today. So it's going to be an amazing day uh, in SIB K KL today. And, ha, ah, December. It's Christmas, right? So you already saw just now in the video, it's Christmas on uh, 25th of December and so ngam ngam chun chun for those of you who don't understand it's tepat tepat on 25th of December it's Christmas Day itself on a Saturday yes Woo! and we're gonna have yay we're gonna have a wonderful celebration where here in Bangunan Yin so on 25th December it's a Saturday we're gonna have a morning service instead of an evening service like right now it's going to be at 10 a.m. over here in Bangunan Yin and then on Sunday, we still have two services which are at 8.30 a.m. and 11 a.m. And of course, as usual, Christmas is a time that we want to just share this love and joy to our friends who have yet to even hear the name Jesus. So we will want to encourage you, for those of you who are coming here, we are going to have Christmas 
at church because you're physically here. But if you're unable to join us, we're going to have Christmas at home. Exactly. So Christmas at home, we want to invite you to even get our party packs, our Christmas pack, so that you can decorate your house to create that wonderful atmosphere, that joyous feeling of Christmas so that your friends will feel very welcome. So if you cannot remember what I have said, just go to the link, okay? SIBKL slash ORG, Christmas, all the information will be there. Wow, that's I think everything I want to say right now. So today, are you guys excited for our service today? Yeah! If you're excited, can I just invite all of you to stand up? We're going to just uh, start with a word of prayer and then we're going to go into a very powerful worship today. Come. Father Lord, we just thank you for today. We thank you for your grace and mercy in our lives through this whole year as we come to the last month of the year and as even as we want to celebrate this whole Christmas season. The Lord, Christmas season is about that joy, that promises that you have for us, Lord Jesus. As today, we are in church, whether physically or online. We want to celebrate this wonderful gift that you have given to us, that you have came to rescue us. And Lord Jesus, we just want to celebrate today because Jesus, we want to celebrate you. We want to celebrate your goodness. And in Jesus' name, we pray everyone say, Amen. Amen. Hello, church. Woo! Church, for the Word of God says in Isaiah 9 verse 6, For to us a son is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and he shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Hallelujah! Let's adore the Lord our God. Hallelujah! Put your hands together, church. We're going to declare that our God is Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father. He's the Prince of Peace. There's no one like the name of Jesus. Hallelujah! Let's declare. Oh, come, all ye faithful. Come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come ye, oh, come ye to bed. Come and behold Him.
church, today we are going to sing a new song. But this song speaks about the posture of worship. You know, remember the woman in, in the Bible that came to Jesus with an alabaster jar? When she broke the jar, people despises her. But Jesus called it a beautiful worship. Won't you want that? Won't you want Jesus to call your worship a beautiful worship? Come on, let's just worship Him. Jesus, Jesus, precious Lord, none on the earth and all heavens above that I have found my beautiful.
raise your voices. Worship Jesus. Worship the King of Kings. One more time. Let's sing. Here I bow. So here I bow to lift you up. That's right. Fill your house with worship. Fill this place with worship. So here I will raise your voice. Raise your voice to Jesus even right now. Jesus, we are forever yours. The Lord, we are not just saying it because it is part of the song, but it is a declaration from within our spirit that we say, Lord Jesus, we are yours. We are yours, Lord Father. The Lord, we trust in you, that you are faithful. You are faithful, God. That's why we can say we are yours. We can trust in you, Lord Father, because you are the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, and forever, Lord Jesus. That's why we can put our firm trust on you, Jesus. That's why we bow before you and we do not bow to anything else. We only bow to you that we proclaim we belong to you. We are yours. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Friends, even right now, can I just invite every one of you to just have your seat in this worshipful manner as we are going to go into a time of communion. For those of you at home, if you have yet to have prepared your emblems, can I just uh, encourage you to quickly grab a, a, a biscuit, a piece of bread and some juice. And for those of you here who just joined us, if you have not received your emblems, can I just ask you to just raise your hands. Yeah, we have some here and there and we will just pass you the emblems. And for the rest of us, in the next five minutes, can I just invite you, focus on Jesus. Focus on what communion really means. You know, as we reach end of the year, December, it's always a time that we reflect what we have done throughout the year. That's really what communion really is. It is a time of reflection. And today, as all of you are holding the emblems, I'm not sure, maybe some of you feel that 2021 has been a very tough year for me. And because of that, some of us may have gone a step closer to God, that we are spending more time with Him. But some of us may have felt that I have not been even coming back to God instead I've been going further and further away and as you look at the emblems you feel that I don't deserve to even hold this right now I've gone so far I've done things that I'm not proud of this year as I reflect maybe it's some form of unforgiveness some form of anger maybe it's some hidden sin that has been kept for a long, long time. And as you even think about all those, you say, oh, I'm not worthy to hold this. No, friends, that's the total opposite of what communion really is. Instead, actually, communion is a time that we reflect, but it does not end with a feeling of condemnation that I'm not good enough, I'm not holy enough to hold this. But it ends with freedom because of the forgiveness that came from Jesus on that cross. It is not a time to feel condemned. I am not good enough. 
know what? All of us are not worthy enough to hold all these emblems, friends. But today, can I just encourage all of you? Even it says in the Word, as you take of this, remember what I have done on the cross, what Jesus has done on the cross. That He took all this guilt that we are feeling, all this sin, the things that we have done, He took the penalty of sin upon Himself. He did not deserve it, but He took it upon Himself. Why? To give us that freedom. But that freedom is not a freedom that we take for granted. That we can do whatever we want. So friends, today, even as you hold the emblems, wherever you are, let's take this time to just reflect, remember, confess our deepest sin, if I can call it that way. Things that you have been hid, hiding for a long time that no one knows. Present it before our Father Lord Jesus because He's here today and He wants, wants us to reconcile back with Him. So friends, for the next 30 seconds, can I invite everyone to just close your eyes speak to Jesus in a way that you are comfortable ask for forgiveness if there is a need to or ask Him again like Lord Jesus would you just come make me feel whole again I, I've been so far away in your own words for the next 30 seconds atmosphere can I invite you let's partake of the bread together in the same way after supper he took the cup saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of of me friends let's drink of this cup together friends the word of God say that every time we do communion it's a time that we remember what Jesus has done on the cross for us yes we may have forgotten, but today is a time that we remember the grace and mercy that Jesus has for us. That as we receive it, we receive it like, as that song says, that here I bow. We bow to receive it. Lord, we are not worthy. We are not worthy. Therefore, we bow before you. We want to thank you. We want to thank you that today there is no condemnation that we will be able to raise our head without that feeling of guilt and condemnation because we have that, that freedom that comes from you, that love that comes from you, Lord. We want to thank you for that. Father, Lord, we just thank you for this time that we can remember what you have done on the cross for every one of us. Lord, we just want to say we love you. We want to say we thank you. We thank you. We just want to commit the rest of our lives into your hands. We want to follow after you to reach one step closer to our destiny that you have for us. Thank you. Lead us, Lord. Lead us. In Jesus' name, amen. As we just continue worshipping, can I invite you to just worship together as we sing, Here I Bow.
stretch our hands to the Lord, shall we do that? As an act of surrender. So that the words of the song is not just be just say it, but we mean it. That here we bow, honoring the Lord because His presence is here even this evening. Whether you are here or at home, in the living room, in the bedroom, or in the TV room, wherever you are, God is there with you. God is here with us. So, Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for the bread. We thank you, Lord, even for the wine. We thank you, Lord, for the, for the grape juice that remembers you. And you said so, Father, remember me. Remember me. Remember me. And so, Father, we remember you till you come again. So, Father, we commit even this evening, the rest of this time, as I share the message to you, you help me, Lord. Help me. I need your strength. I need your anointing. I need your help once again. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Now, God's people say, Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give one a good clap offering. Please be seated. Thank you. Okay. Not working. Okay. Well, never mind. While they are playing around with that or meddling that, I just want to do a commercial. This is a book, uh, Same God, Different Stories, written by Stephen Ng, one of our members of our church. Uh, uh, very readable, uh, just only about 80 pages, good Christmas present. It's just a collection of uh, testimonies. And one of the testimonies is from our church, our own church member, Brenda Yong. And it's amazing, peace in the eye of storm. As I read that testimony, I, I just wondered how on earth she could go through it all. And the amazing thing is, she went through it all triumphantly. And today, she is alive to share the goodness of God. And there's so many testimonies here. And uh, so, same God, different stories. So, get it uh, in Canaan land. All right, Canaan land. And you'll be blessed. Believe me, you'll be blessed. As I was blessed as I read this book. It's not moving, Pastor. It's not moving? Okay, they will control it. Okay, so be it. Okay. Okay, well, all right, so be it. Okay, good, well done. Zechariah, close of Zechariah. So we've come to the last sermon of Zechariah, and it's amazing how we took a good two years to do it. Not all of two years, but uh, the third quarter of last year and the third quarter of this year. And uh, so we're coming now to what I call the conclusion the review of Zechariah. So today I have entitled my message, The Review of Zechariah. And tomorrow, Pastor Isaac has entitled his message, Why Zechariah? Um, if you look at the book of Zechariah, I'm just going to do a review today and draw up lessons from it. I mentioned to you that last year we did chapter 1 to chapter 8. And this year, we did chapter 9 to chapter 14. Why, why, why did we divide the two? Eh? And I, I gave you the differences before, that the first eight chapters is written by a very young Zechariah. Very young Zechariah. And then somewhere along the line, many, many years, actually a good 40 years, for after 40 years, Zechariah appeared again. No? A very old Zechariah now. And now, he prophesies. Different kind of prophecies. The first eight chapters, prophecies about Israel at that time, and then chapter 9 to chapter 14, prophecies about Israel in the future and prophecies about the, second, the first and second coming of Jesus Christ for Zechariah in the future. So if I were to look at the book of Zechariah, how would I review it? to give us a summary of it in the next half an hour or so. For me, there are three highlights. What I call distinctive marks or highlights of this book. Number one, the prophecies of Zechariah. There are prophecies in this book that is outstanding, you know, that really, whoa, give you the aha factor. The second highlight for me as I review the whole book is not only its spiritual prophecies, but somewhere in Zechariah chapter 6, 
there is a significant shift of spiritual leadership of Israel from the, the other ways into the priesthood. And that has tremendous implications even for us today as New Testament believers. But where did it all start? Zechariah. And the third distinctive mark of Zechariah is that more than any other book in the Bible, in the Old Testament, it talks about the spiritual salvation of Israel. So these are the three highlights of this book, okay? So let me go to the first one. The first distinctive mark of Zechariah is clearly the prophecies. The prophecies. So I told you, the first eight chapters consist of eight visions. One vision after another vision. And the amazing thing is, it all happened in one night. Right? Poor Zechariah couldn't sleep. He was about to sleep and you wake up, another one, another one, another one, another one. Eight prophecies, visions, all in one night. Well, only a young man can do that. Old people cannot. Is it old men see visions or old young men see visions? I can't remember now. Young men see visions, right? So, told you? See? Young men see visions, right? Old men dream dreams. So, because a young man, so God gave him visions, no? all right? Eight visions all in one night, no? One after another. But all of these visions is about Israel at that time. So, so what are they? I, I just read it out to you, all right? Four horsemen among the myrtle trees, four horns and four craftsmen, a man with a measuring line, Joshua, the high priest, change of uh, clothes, the, the golden lampstand and two olive trees, the flying scroll, or like Aladdin, uh, the flying carpet, the, man, uh, the woman in a basket and four chariots and so on. So, so all together, eight visions. But from chapter 9 to chapter 14, shift. An old man, this time, God gave him prophecies concerning the two comings. Eight visions, chapter 1 to chapter 8. Two comings, chapter 9 to chapter 14. That's what you remember. All right? Do a review. So, the second half of Zechariah, which we did this year, chapter 9, chapter 14, we saw the prophecies concerning two things. Concerning the first coming of Jesus and concerning the second coming of Jesus. You must remember that Zechariah lived 500 years before Jesus came. All right? So when he prophesied the first coming, is 500 years to come, you know. And what's more, He's, he prophesied also the second coming of Jesus yet to come. And I'm going to use this as a learning curve in a short while. So there are three key prophecies of Zechariah chapter 9 to chapter 14 concerning the first coming. Amazing thing about these three prophecies about Jesus in his first coming, 500 years later, is not that it was accurate, but it was accurate to the minutest detail. What? So detailed that you would have thought that, hey, Zechariah, you must have wrote this after Jesus came. No. He wrote this 500 years before Jesus came. So detailed was it that the first one talked about Jesus entering Jerusalem in the triumphal entry sitting on a donkey, and not any donkey, eh, but the colt, a young donkey, fulfilled in Mark. The second prophecy concerned Jesus betrayed for 30 pieces of silver in Zechariah 11, verse 12 to 13. Let me read this. And I told them, if you think it best, give me my pay but if not, keep it. So they paid me 30 pieces of silver. That was the price Judas betrayed Jesus. But the amazing thing is verse 13 when he said, And the Lord said to me, Throw it to the potter, the handsome price at which they price me. 
So I took the 30 pieces of silver and threw them into the house of the Lord to the potter. And it was exactly fulfilled. Not only was Jesus betrayed by 30 pieces of silver, Judas, after he betrayed Jesus, took the 30 pieces of silver and threw it at the potter's house in the house, in the temple. What? Exact. That's a genius. So it, 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 is, it is amazing in terms of its accuracy. Wow. And of course, Zechariah 13 verse 7, strike the shepherd and the sheep will scatter. Probably it refers to the disciples. But what is even more remarkable is the detail of the prophecy of the second coming. And we did that the last two months, right? Chapter 12, chapter 13, chapter 14. So detailed that we read that Jerusalem in the battle of Armageddon will be overrun. Two-thirds of, Jerus of Jerusalem will be killed. And Jesus will now return on the Mount of Olives and so on and so forth. Now, this is a lesson. Hear me well. The lesson of the prophecies of Zechariah, the take-home is this. I follow Pastor Jeffrey. Uh, the take-home point, take-home point, right? This take-home point is this. If the prophecies concerning the first coming of Jesus Christ came to pass, do you not think the prophecies regarding the second coming of Jesus will come to pass? Do you not think? Of course. Same God, same book, same prophet. So, think. Think with me, friends. Just think with me. 500 years before Jesus Christ came, Zechariah prophesied, came to pass in the minutest detail. In English, we say, to the T. How much more will his prophecies regarding the second coming of Jesus Christ will also 110% come to pass? If you agree, we say amen. amen. So what do we do? So what should our response be? Two things. Number one, get ready, you know? We just did communion, right? Why on earth do you think that Jesus Christ, before he went up back to, 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 to heaven, before he went to the cross, spent the Passover night with the, with the disciples, instituted the communion which we did 2,000 years later? What's the significance of it? Take the bread, take the, the, the thing, the juice, Till when? Till when? Till he comes. Even today, on the 4th of December, 2021, we are remembering, looking forward in anticipation as we took the communion just now. And we will do it till he comes. And Jesus Christ will surely come back again. Amen? So we live our lives. We live our lives in that anticipation. We cannot forget it. We cannot just simply take the communion and go back and say nothing, nothing happens. Cannot, cannot be one. Cannot be one. Surely it must affect the way we live. Surely it must affect the way we think. Surely it must affect our, the way, our lifestyle, we conduct ourselves, how we see life. It has to be. But a second implication I learned from the spiritual prophecies is this. Hey, it tells me that the Word of God is true. Do you think so? We just studied Zechariah. Ma. Do you know that Zechariah, for the last two years, we did 33 sermons? 33 sermons uh, on 14 chapters, you know. Wow, absolutely right. Wow. 
but it's not more than, it's more than just a sermon, friends. It's the Word of God. So what it tells me is this. I want to read the Word of God. I want to study the Word of God. I, I want to have a, a hunger for the Word of God. Why? Because the Word of God not only tells me about the present, it also tells me about the future. Don't you think so? So, it's better than reading your novel. Uh, well, I won't say that, okay? It, it, it's better than reading any other book, right? Because it tells you about your life. It tells you about what's... You understand what's happening in the world today. And it tells you about the future. So, for me, I don't know about you, my learning point for the book of Zechariah is, I want to read the Word of God. I'm not sick of the Word of God. I'm not tired of the Word of God because this is the eternal Word of God. Remember, everything will pass away, but what will not pass away? Absolutely. So read it. Joshua 1 verse 8. Read it with me. Everybody read this with me. Are you ready? Those of you at home as well. Okay. Let's read Scripture and remind ourselves what are the key lessons we learn as we studied the book of Zechariah, as we studied Jude, as we studied First and Second Thessalonians this year, as we studied uh, Revelations, remember? Okay, come, let's read this book. Let's read this. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. Are you ready? The balcony as well, at home, here. Are you ready? Read out loud. Are you ready? Joshua 1, verse 8. One, two, three. Do not let this book of the law... One, one more time, let's speak louder. One, two, three. Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Wow. The promise of God. Don't let this book Depart from your mouth. Read it day and night. It's never about programs. It's never about all... The, look, Christmas, all the excitement is fine. We are not, I'm not saying don't, don't do that. But the most important thing is read the Word. Soak yourselves in the Word. Do that, my friend, next year, in the coming year. Tell yourself, I've studied so much this year. Next year, I want to spend, craft out more time reading the Word of God. Amen? The second distinctive mark of the book of Zechariah is not only its spiritual prophecies, but also there is a very significant shift in the spiritual leadership of Israel. And it's found in Zechariah chapter 6. Let me read this portion. Zechariah chapter 6, verse 11 to verse 13. A very most definitive, defining moment that has tremendous implication for every one of us here today. So God said to Zechariah, Take the silver and the gold, make a crown, Zechariah, make a crown, and then set it on the head of the high priest, Joshua, son of Jehoshadak. Tell him, this is what the Lord Almighty says. Here is the man whose name is the branch, and he will branch out from his place and build the temple of the Lord. It is he who will build the temple of the Lord and he will be clothed with majesty and he will sit and rule on his throne and he will be a priest on his throne and there will be harmony between the two. Wow. A very unusual event. Zechariah was asked to make a crown and instead of putting the crown on Zerubbabel, who was the governor of, 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 of Judah at that time, and Zerubbabel came from the royal line of David. 
I would imagine Zerubbabel Bell was there, maybe Joshua, the high priest, was there. And as Zechariah came with the crown, instead of crowning Zerubbabel, Bell, he put the crown on Joshua, the high priest. What? Prophet Zerubbabel was saying, hey, hey, it's me, not him, you know. I, I am the one who's a royal line. No. Why? From that moment onwards, the leadership of Israel shifted to the priesthood. Whoa! That's very significant. So if I were to put it in a chart, a flow chart, it would be like this. The spiritual leadership shift in the history of Israel is started with the fathers, the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. And from the fathers, it came to the prophets, I, Elijah. And then from Elijah to Samuel and so on and so forth. And then came to the kings. Remember Samuel the prophet? And after that came Saul and David. And then it went on to the last king, Jehoiachim, came to, then at the exile. For 70 years they were exiled. And then Zechariah came back and this happened. Remember Zechariah came back for the rebuilding of the temple? So after 70 years, Somehow, in the grand economy of God, God wanted to shift the spiritual leadership of Israel from the fathers, the patriarchs, to the prophets, to the kings, and now he put the crown on the high priest. So from that moment onwards, the entire spiritual leadership of Israel now moves to the high priest, and that is why when Jesus Christ came, Israel was under the high priesthood of Caiaphas and Ananias. Right through the leadership of Israel, the spiritual leadership of Israel uh, shifted to the priesthood. And not only is it any priesthood because of the crown, it's a royal priesthood. Whoa! Very, very important. And it happened in Zechariah. Now, I won't have time to go to this in detail, but I remembered last year sometime in the month of November, all right, I did a sermon entitled New Testament Believers as a Kingdom of Priests. Now, go into it, all right, it's a very more detailed elaboration of this very momentous shift. But suffice it to say, that it is so important that it has tremendous implications for you and I today. Now, if I were to put it in another way, the involvement of the leadership of Israel from the patriarchs to the priests, I would put it this way. And it's another way of the same chart. If I were to put the whole history of Israel in the 500-year blocks, so from zero to 500 years, the patriarchs rule. Then from 1,500 to 1,000 BC, the prophets rule, Elijah to Samuel. And then David came, 1,000 BC, right until 500 BC, that's when Zechariah came. So if roughly, uh, if you put it into 500 blocks, 500 year blocks, it would be like this. Patriarchs, prophets, kings, priests. And then Jesus came. 4 AD. Why is that important? Why? Why is it that God allowed the whole of Israel to go through the whole spectrum of the leadership of the patriarchs, the prophets, the kings, and the priests? And then Jesus came. The key is this. All of them failed. Every one of these patriarchs, Prophets, kings, priests, all of these four officers, the leadership of Israel failed. Why? Because it was done by human beings. And then Jesus came, and all four officers converged into him the father, the prophet, the high priest, king of kings. 
And Jesus Christ now epitomizes the four offices of leadership. Only he succeeds because he's the perfect one. Every other person failed. So Israel was given the opportunity to experience all four types of leadership, all fail because it was done by human beings. And Jesus Christ came, the perfect one. And today, he's the father, he's a prophet, he's a high priest, and he's the king of kings. So only in Jesus Christ can all these four officers come together and be successful now. So you tell me, Pastor, very good, very good, but what has it got to do with me? And this is where I apply this. Two things. What application has this shift has to you and to me today? Now, listen to me very carefully now. Very carefully. Two very significant implications to you and to me as New Testament believers. Number one. Jesus Christ today, as I speak, is a high priest. Jesus Christ today, as I speak, has gone back to heaven not to do nothing, but the Bible tells us he is now sitting in the heavenly realms as the high priest interceding for you and for me. Whoa! So that through him, we can access the king. Whoa! So I don't know what you're going through today. I don't know what kind of troubles you're going through today. I don't know what it is. But I want to believe that as we pray, Jesus Christ is in the Bible. He intercedes for you and for me as the high priest, as an intercessor. He, he takes our, our prayers and presents it to God. As the high priest, remember? So I don't know what it is today. The implication for you and for me is Jesus Christ today is our high priest and all of us are royal priests. First Peter. Okay. This uh, Hebrews, it tells us that Jesus Christ is high priest, all right? We have this hope as an anchor of the soul, firm and secure, he enters the main sanctuary behind the curtain where Jesus, who went before us, has entered on our behalf. He has become a high priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. So the implication for you and for me in the shift in Zechariah is that today as I speak, Jesus Christ, even though he's gone up to heaven, is now our high priest and all the prayers that we give to him is not wasted, understand? As the high priest, he now takes our prayers and present it to God. But the other implication, I told you implications, uh, for us as New Testament believers, is that all of us today are priests. The priesthood of all believers. And we are not ordinary priests. We are royal priests. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 9. Come on, let's read it with me. Are you sure? Okay. Let's read Scripture. So what am I doing now? I am applying Old Testament truths to New Testament, new believers in our everyday life. It has a tremendous impact on us, understand? So let's read 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 to verse 10. Are you ready? Once again, down here in the balcony at home. Are you ready? Come read it with me. Are you ready? One, read it out loud, huh? One, two, three. But you are a, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, so that you may declare the praises of Him who called you out of darkness into His wonderful light. Verse 10. One, two, three. Once you had not received mercy. It has tremendous implications for you and me. It was not merely an act, but it was a prophetic act that up to today, you and I as New Testament believe it foreshadows 
what happens today, that as priests, royal priests, we are priests of God. So what must we do? We pray. Lah. So as priests, we can pray for other people. We minister to other people. Do you think so? So whether you're in the workplace or whether you're in a college or whether you're at home, look, fathers, you are the priests of God. You are the head of the family. Bring your family to God in prayer. Come on, businessmen. Bring your company to God in prayer and God will bless. Mothers, pray for your children. Whatever it is, pastors, we bring our flock to God in prayer. Why? Because we all of us are priests, right? And so we go now into the world and we see someone hurting, we see someone in pain, someone in need. What do we do? Run away? No, we pray. Why? We minister. Why? Because all of us are priests. That is the reason why whatever happened in Zechariah has tremendous implications for you and for me today. All of us are priests in the sight of God. The third, oh, that's the reason why we need to pray. Uh, I just want to give you a head start. We're going to have a watch night service on the 31st of December. I will physically as well as online, all right, book. It, it's no, nothing better than to come to church uh, and to transit into the new year physically. Do you think so? All right. So, so it will only be limited places, all right. So uh, come on the 31st of December. The reason why I show this is because we're going to spend the last half an hour of 2021 transiting into 2022 in prayer. That by Pastor Lee Chu. And not only that, because we really believe uh, that we, we must pray, right, more than ever before, next year in January, we are going to start in prayer. How? Early dawn prayer. Monday to Friday, 6 a.m. to 7.30, the first week of January, this is an online one, all online one, we come together to pray. And then after that, for 21 days, 21 nights rather, we go to pray. Why? Eh? Because we are priests. And as priests, we intercede and we pray, right? So what are we doing? We are just putting into practice the scriptural office that God has given to us and this authority He has given to us. So we exercise it. Do that, my friend. Pray for your family, pray for the church, pray for our nation, amen? So we'll do that next year. The third mark of Zechariah, as I come to a close now, is not only his spiritual prophecies, it's not only the spiritual shift of leadership, but also the salvation, the spiritual salvation of Israel. I don't want to go into it at all because we have dealt very, very detailed into it in the last two or three weeks. Ending with, all Israel will be saved. So now, again, I have the worship team. I'm going to close. As I read back the book of Zechariah, I ask myself this very fundamental question. What have I learned about God? What have I learned about Him? What does it tell me? As I, we went through the 14 chapters of Zechariah about God. Why? Why is it important? Same God, ma, right? The God of Zechariah is also my God, right? The God of Zechariah is also our God, right or wrong? So what have I learned? Three things. Number one, I learned that God is in control. Huh? He's not out of control. You think that situation in the world is out of COVID, la, is out of control. But no. Actually, everything follows according to His divine timeline. 
Don't you think so? Yeah. So it gives me tremendous comfort. It gives me tremendous strength to know that no matter what happens in Malaysia, he's in control. And for Pastor Nichu and I, over the last week or so, I don't know about her for me. I have to remind myself, he's in control. No matter what happens, our life is in His hands. No matter what happens to the church, as I now come to 70 over years old, in a transition, He's in control. It comforts me. But I also know that not only God is in control, but God cares. He's not long distance by remote control, managing chewing cheese affairs, managing SIBKL affairs, managing Malaysia's affairs. No. He cares. Again and again in the Bible, in Zechariah, His call to Israel is this, therefore tell the people, this is what I'm saying to you, my friend. This is what I'm saying to you as we come to the close. Return to me. This is a shepherd speaking. This is a shepherd heart. This is not the heart of, of, of somebody, a CEO, no. This is the heart of the Father. He cares. We come back to me, He says. And I will return to you, says the Lord Almighty. Zechariah 13 gives us a shepherd motif. The shepherd motif is so strong. Strike the shepherd, scatter the sheep. In other words, God is reminding you and reminding to me, God cares. You're not a nameless digit somewhere in the sea of faces. No. He cares for you. Zechariah chapter 13 verse 7 says this, verse 9. This is God saying, huh? and He's saying to you and to me to, today as we come to the close of this sermon, they will call on my name and I will answer them. I will say, they are my people and they will say, the Lord is our God. You, you, you see the intimacy, the care of the shepherd, and as I close, I want to say this to you, my friend, wherever you are listening, here or on site or online, He's in control and He cares for you. That's what I learned about God. And the third thing I learned about God, if I know that He's in control of my life, if I know that He cares for me no matter what happens, what must I do? What does He want me to do? He wants me to consecrate. That's how the book of Zechariah ended. Holiness. God's intention in the book of Zechariah, in fact, in the entire Bible, is that you and I separate ourselves intentionally, volitionally, in other words, willingly, lah, no compulsion. Not because pastor tell you to do that for you to know. You want it. And my prayer for you, for me, as we close the year, will you not consecrate your life back again to God? Holiness just means kadosh, set apart. That's all, nothing more than that. There's no hello one. It's an intentional decision that you, in your own way, decide on December the 4th, 2021, that Lord, yes Lord, I want to set aside my life for you once again. I want to consecrate myself, kadosh, so that I can be used by you because that is what you want me to do. Will we do that? Hallelujah. Let's pray. Let's pray. Oh, Ramanda kata da 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 Shukuriya da kata da 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 Sikiri di di handa rashandai 
Oh, Ramanda, every one of you, all eyes closed, all heads bowed. I want to believe that as we come to the close of Zechariah, it's just a close of yet another book that we study. But more important than the sermons that we preach, more important than the words that we say, is how do you respond to God who's calling you today? He's not asking you to give up your life and that kind of thing. He's just asking you to set yourself apart for Him. <laughs> is that difficult? And He's not going to punish you. He's not going to lead you to things and ask you to do things you cannot do. He's a good God. He's a good God, my friend. He's a good God. And all that He requires from you and from me is that we make a deliberate decision as we come to the close of another year, before we step into the new year, to return to Him. And Pastor Isaac will deal more about it tomorrow. To return, to rebuild, to restore back once again. Restore back your love for Him. Restore back your, your heart and your desire and your... And your, and your and your desire for Him to draw close to Him. Will you do that, my friend? Will you do that? Oh, Ramanda, kata da 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 kata da 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 handai. At the close of this evening, all heads bowed, all eyes closed. If your heart you feel, Lord, yes, Lord, I know this year has been a difficult year. But as we come to the close of yet another year, the last month of the year, today, on the strength of the Word of God that's been preached, on the strength that you are in control, on the strength that you do care, on the strength, oh God, that you want us to consecrate, today I respond to you. I want you to stand if you would respond to God. By standing, you say, Pastor, I want to hand over my life to God. I want to consecrate my days to the Lord. The remaining days of my life, I want to give it back to God once again. Oh, no more. Banish that coldness. Banish that, that dullness. Banish that lost love. No, I want to get back my first love again. You will do that. Will you stand? Let me pray for you. Will you stand? I'm in the balcony down here. By standing, you say, Pastor, pray for me. I want to consecrate my life once again back to you again and again in Zechariah return to me return to me return to me will you do that friend will you do that and let me pray for you and those of you in the homes if you want to do that you raise your hands in the living room in the TV room you just stretch your hands to God Father in Jesus' name So many people are standing before you in this hall In the balcony as well And Father I know, Father Lord, even in the homes Many of you are lifting up your hands I may not be there to see it, but God sees and so in Jesus' name, Father, whatever our issues are, we want to surrender. We want to yield to you, Father, knowing very well that you are in control of our businesses. You are in control of our lives. You are in control of our health. You are in control of our future. You are in control of our family. You are in control of our career. You are in control of our ministry. You are in control of this church. You are in control of our nation. Oh, Father, we, we surrender and yield control over to you. Knowing very well, Father, you don't only control, but you care. You care. You are our good shepherd that cares for his sheep. Oh, Ramanda, Shandai. And so I say to you this day, whether here or at home, in Isaiah 43, verse 18 and 19, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, God says to you this day, I'm doing a new thing. 
now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I'm going to make a way in the desert and streams in the wasteland. Yes, God will make a way where there is no way. God will make a way where there is no way. So Father, we want to surrender our lives back again to you once more. You take over, Lord. You take over. Oh, Ramanda, kata da 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 da. Presence of God is here, you know. Just surrender your life, your families, your future to the hands of God. He's a good God. He's a great God. Hallelujah, Lord. Come, let's sing this chorus as we close. Let's all stand, shall we, as we sing this so closing song. Sing it in a prayer to God. Surrender your life to God. Amen. Tell Him that you belong to Him. Tell Him you belong to Him. Amen. Whoa. Here I bow to lift you high. Jesus, be glorified and all things for all my life. I am yours. Here I bow. Here I bow. Come on. Come on. Acknowledge. No, don't only acknowledge Him. Honor Him. Stretch our hands to the Lord as we close. You know, it's wonderful. I received a phone call this morning at about 7, 8 o'clock from someone who was so surprised. He said, Pastor, I don't know. This morning, the Lord woke me up at 3, 4 o'clock in the morning and I prayed for you and I prayed for Pastor Lee Chu tears came to my eyes because he doesn't know what's happening but God woke him up and he prayed for my family and I know and I know in my spirit that God cares God cares and he is very much in control of your life of my life will you surrender it to the Lord once more once again Lay down your life. Consecrate your life back again to Him. Spend the next minute before God, before I close. We do that, my friend. You know, there's a sweet, gentle presence of God amongst us this evening. And wherever you're listening as well, God is there with you. God knows what you're going through, my friend. Nothing escapes Him. He's in control. He's in control of your family he's in control of your affairs he's in control of your business he's in control of your career he's in control of your family and so father we surrender to you once again we abandon ourselves to you Lord. we throw ourselves to you 
and come what may. We want to believe, oh God, that surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. And we dwell in the house of the Lord forever, forever. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much indeed. And so the Lord bless you and keep you this day. May the Lord turn His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn His countenance towards all of you and your loved ones and always grant you shalom, shalom. In Jesus' precious name we pray and God's people say aloud, Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give God a good clap offering. God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful week that lies ahead. Thank you. Service over. Thank you for joining us for service today. If you would like someone to pray for you, head over to the link and our pastors and leaders would love to pray and connect with you. One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. If you're new to our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunan Yin, don't forget to validate your Touch and Go card. Hi everyone! Would you like to get to know SIBKL a little bit more? If you've ever had such questions like, how can I join a cell group? How can I serve in a ministry? How can I be discipled? How can I be a member? How can I join one of our SIBKL events? Or any other questions, then I invite you to click on the link below and we will connect with each other via WhatsApp. One of our Connect leaders will reach out to you. We would love to connect with you, so we invite you to connect with us. God bless.
If you're new to our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunanyin, don't forget to validate your Touch and Go card. One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. Hi everyone! Here's a step-by-step -step guide on how you can book your e-ticket online. First, log on to sibkl.org.my Then click on Physical Services. Next, scroll down and click on whichever service you would like to attend. You'll be directed to a new page where you can book your ticket. Please read through the guidelines as we care for your safety. Click on Register. Select Buy on Map. Zoom in to select your seats. Click Checkout. Fill in your details and you'll find the ticket in your email inbox. It's that simple. Looking forward to seeing you at church.
If you're new to our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunan Yin, don't forget to validate your Touch and Go card. One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. Hi everyone! Here's a step-by-step -step guide on how you can book your e-ticket online. First, log on to sibkl.org.my Then click on Physical Services. Next, scroll down and click on whichever service you would like to attend. You'll be directed to a new page where you can book your ticket. Please read through the guidelines as we care for your safety. Click on Register. Select Buy on Map. Zoom in to select your seats. Click Checkout. Fill in your details.
If you're new to our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunanyin, don't forget to validate your Touch and Go card. One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. Hi everyone! Here's a step-by-step guide on how you can book your e-ticket online. First, log on to sibkl.org.my Then click on Physical Services. Next, scroll down and click on whichever service you would like to attend. You'll be directed to a new page where you can book your ticket. Please read through the guidelines as we care for your safety. Click on Register. Select Buy on Map. Zoom in to select your seats. Click Checkout. Fill in your details and you'll find the ticket in your email inbox. It's that simple. Looking forward to seeing you at church.